I'm Kate McLeod. I'm here to tell you about what I do with Dichroic Extract by CVS. I recommend you start small. Not pendant small, but no plate small. Such that you can get the feel of the Dichroic Extract. It is a particulate substance which requires a somewhat rough surface to pull it over so that it fragments. To perfect this surface, you could either use a sandblaster or dust clear powder over your glass, same COE required here, such that you can tack fuse it to about 1300, that would be COE 90, and then get a nice little anneal 30 minutes at your annealing point according to your manufacturer's directions. I go two passes very lightly over the glass with the powder from about 24 inches up so it just floats down. You don't have to get it as even as when you're doing colored powder work because it's clear and it's not going to show in the end, it's just going to provide you the surface that you need. Of course, glass powder requires a little bit of protection. Lovely, isn't it? all there is to it. This is what the piece looks like after it's been tack fused. You might be able to pick up these little tiny black lines which I give myself a little help with with a black sharpie which burns off and doesn't do vitrify. So I've got a slightly rough surface. In order for the dichroic extract to flow, I use bullseye's glass tack to keep it in place and allow it to flow. Wonderful thing about glass tack is it takes forever to dry. So I'm going to take a bit of the glass tack and I'm going to wet only the portion that I intend to paint at this point in time. I'm going to give it a fairly generous application, but not such that it runs into the area that I'm not going to be putting dichroic extract on. Even coating will benefit you down the line. I'm going to start with green magenta. I used this yesterday, so as you can see, I have leftovers which the water has evaporated from, therefore there is absolutely no waste. I'm going to tap gently the amount that I think I will need for my entire project into the same cup I used yesterday and getting a sufficient amount in there because again no waste so I can overdo it just a bit. I use a dropper to bring in a little water and then I simply dampen the amount of dichroic extract to the point that I could load a clean brush and pick it up pretty much like paint. This has dried out a little bit so I'm going to reactivate it with some pure water just so that I have a nice flow for the dichroic extract. From here on in, it's much like painting with watercolor. I've loaded my brush with the correct amount of dichroic extract. It's very important to get the right amount first time around. The reason you want the right amount is so that when you put it down, 
you can pull it through to the end of your brush stroke, leaving the correct quantity on the glass. It's not the easiest thing to take it away, much easier to add more. I still have sufficient amount on my brush to take my next couple of brushes and I'm going to bring it down into what will become the more negative space. I'm now going to blend into what I would call my highlight color with my second color, starting oh probably a quarter inch away because that's where I want that color to be. Isn't that a gorgeous, gorgeous shade of blue? Then I'm going to what I call crosshatch, much like you would do in a rendering, such that I blend those colors together, pulling the magenta into the blue and the blue into the magenta in order to get a beautiful fade. I've set up some water cups here between the colors. Again, that will eventually evaporate and I'll be able to use that as a completely new color. I'm going to go back in and smooth it out to get that fade. Same methodology. Mix it in. And I've decided I want a little more blue. I'm not completely happy with this much color in here. So I'm going to rinse my brush, essentially get it loaded with water, and I'm going to use a bit of a watercolor technique in that I'm going to add water to the point that it will allow me to pull the color back and use the base color of the glass as a shading color. Again, a watercolor technique of angling your canvas such that you can get the paint, in this case the dichroic extract, to run where you want it to be. Notice it doesn't run into the dry areas. Watch as the dichroic extract sparkles down into place. Enjoy the process. On the next segment, I'm going to skip one because I want to be able to border a very definitive line against this, and if it's wet, it will blend together. So I'm going to come over to this segment and bring color into it, allowing the other to dry.
stiff bristle brush is imperative to lay the dichro extract down. As I near finish, a couple of comments about when you're done. You don't want to build up too much dichroic extract where it appears gray. A silvering is fine, but a grayish tone will indicate too much. Applying dichroic extract is a time sensitive mechanism in that it has to be the exact proportion of water to extract. This is done, done post dry such that you can dry brush in a certain amount that is just barely damp and get more exacting lines than you're otherwise able to perform. See how that sharpens that line? Refreshing my brush content. And that will bring that out to pop that center. I'm rather enjoying that little dark center in there of the black background glass. WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. When this is damp, it's going to appear very much like the finished product. Just about ready to call this one complete. I will let it dry completely and then I will dust a couple layers of clear powder over it just like I did at the beginning. The dichroic extract will adhere to the glass without it, but I happen to like that wet finish. When it's dry, it has a much more matte finish to it than it will once it's fired. Before you go to powder, before everything dries, you're going to want to remove any residual dichroic that's gotten on the edges. It can and will show. So you want to get rid of any extra. The black that's coming up on this is the Sharpie where I traced it for my bottom layer. So here's the last pass with powder. Again, very similar to the first. If you build up too much powder, you will catch tiny, tiny air bubbles, and that will appear whitish and diminish the effect of the dichroic extract. Not desirable.